I've seen a bunch of videos of these 72 volt Razor dirt bikes, and I really wanted to build one, but I couldn't find a frame for less than 500 bucks, which is way too much. However, I did find these two Razor E300 scooters, one of which even works. These scooters use lead acid batteries and a brush motor, which is all really old technology. To start with the upgrades, I'll be building a lithium ion battery pack out of the 140 extra cells for my last build. Because these were used cells, I tested them all and then took the capacity numbers and put them into this pack builder at repacker.com. I entered the number of cells in series, parallel, and generated the pack. This arranged the cells into the best possible combination to be as balanced as possible. After that, I started assembling a pack, just like my last pack, but with only 7 cells in parallel instead of 15. If I was building this pack for the dirt bike, it would be like this, but since it's for the scooter, I'm going to put it end to end, just like this. Here's a quick comparison between this new battery and the stock battery. I'll even cut the new battery in half to give the stock battery a chance. Now it's about the same size, so it'll be a good comparison. It's a little thinner though, but the BMS makes up for that. The lead acid batteries are only 170 watt hours, but the lithium ion battery is 650. The lead acid batteries can only output 400 watts, but the lithium ion batteries can output 2,500. There's just no comparison. Also, the lead acid batteries are over 11 pounds, while the lithium ion batteries are less than 8 pounds. Enough comparisons, time to build the battery. Right now the two halves can't connect because the spacers only interlock on the sides and not on the ends. To fix this, I offset every other spacer, like this, so they can link together, and I'll take the extra bit from the end and put it here. And after some quick cutting, I got these spacers. After mocking up the battery on the scooter, it looks like it's barely going to have enough room. The new motor is actually the same width as the stock one, so it should fit fine. For this battery, I wanted to try a special technique where you sandwich a material like aluminum or copper between the cells and the nickel strip to reduce the resistance. However, my spot welder just is not powerful enough, so I guess I'll try it some other time. Looks like I'll just be using good old nickel strip. While I was spot welding, I realized this battery tray from the stealth bomber frame is the perfect fit for this battery. All I have to do is bend down this tab, which is pretty easy because it isn't welded on that seam. And just like that, I have a perfect battery tray. At this point, I checked the voltage of all the cells, and one of them was low, so I capacity tested it, and it seemed to test fine, which is great because I have no extra cells. After doing the series connections, I used thinner nickel strip for the parallel sections because they carry less current. I then added some fish paper and soldered some copper wire to some nickel strips and spot welded it on. I also soldered it to the BMS. After that, I did the same with the positive side and soldered a negative wire and the positive side to an XT90 plug. I also left some extra wire for the charging plug. I then did all of the balance leads. It looks pretty messy here, but I managed to get it looking pretty good. I left extra wire because I didn't know how long the charge plug needed to be. Back to the frame. I determined that the kickstand and the stock brakes were going to have to be removed because the motor is way longer than the stock motor. I wanted to upgrade the brakes anyways because they're drum brakes which will probably overheat. So I don't mind that I have to remove them. I will be installing this 160mm rotor and some mechanical calipers. To install this brake rotor, all I have to do is trim the drum down so I can make it sit flat on the back of the drum. I did this by spinning the wheel and using the angle grinder so I can get a perfect cut.
After drilling one hole, I realize there has to be a way to take this brake drum off because there's no way it can come out the other side. So I looked it up and sure enough it just threads on. The easy way to take it off is to put something here and then hammer it like this, which makes it break loose. I think it turned out pretty good in the end. Also, my brake caliper is going to have plenty of clearance. Now time for the motor kit. I bought this kit all together on Amazon because I wanted one kit that has everything I need to make sure everything works together. It came with the throttle, some hardware and a wrench, a sprocket and chain, a pedal throttle, a big controller, a key switch, instruction manual, a terminal block for the thicker wires, Finally, the motor. The chain and sprocket it came with is much bigger than the stock one, and it came with the master link, which is really convenient. However, it still fits on the wheel. I decided to drill the holes on the side of the motor because they were super small and would barely flow any air. If you do this, make sure to remember the nut on the shaft is reverse thread. Now back to the frame, I reinstalled the wheel and cut off everything I wouldn't need. I was thinking of mounting the motor like this, but the motor hits on that side, so I would have to use a bunch of spacers, which wouldn't look good. I decided to cut the bracket off of the motor and mount it using the holes on the side. I first mounted the front, so that when the chain's loose, you can tilt the motor forward and tighten the chain. I then added the back brackets, which have slots instead of holes so the motor can be mounted in different positions. I also added a bolt and a nut so you can tighten the chain. I then cut the extra brackets off the battery tray and started mocking up where I thought it was going to go. After I decided on a position, I started cutting up the other half of the battery tray to mount it to the scooter. After a lot of grinding, cutting, and welding, I had this. Not pretty, but I think it'll do the job. I then welded on some controller mounts. The best place I thought the controller could be was right here on the side. There's not really any other place it would fit. After that, I soldered all the motor and battery connections. I was going to install this throttle, but it has one major flaw. It barely twists at all. Having this tiny twist will make the scooter very hard to control. However, I still need these switches, so I'm just going to cut it off there and use a thumb throttle. On these scooters, this brake line tends to get bent down, which causes a lot of friction in the wire and just generally isn't good. So I'm going to use some shrink wrap and electrical tape to stop that from happening.
For the brake caliper, it's kind of in the wrong position for what I need. The arm's up here and it gets pulled that way, which is totally opposite. So I'm going to flip the arm around so it gets pulled toward the front, which is a lot more convenient. I mounted the brake and I also welded a little support here to handle the torque. I then welded a bracket for the other end of the brake cable and used a piece of the stock brake to connect the two brake lines. After a quick test ride, I stripped it all down and added a couple more brackets before painting. In the end, I think it turned out pretty good. It's obviously not stock, but I think I got as close as possible. Now it's time to go for a ride. After riding it for a bit, the chain stretched out so much that I needed a half link, but I couldn't find one anywhere, so I just put the stock gearing back on to see how fast it will go. It was actually pretty stable. After that, I just made my own half link, because I liked the lower gearing a lot more. After riding it for a while, it just stopped working, so I assumed it was the controller. I took it apart and couldn't find anything wrong, but I just decided to get a new controller because I hated the look of this massive aluminum piece on the side. I ordered a far driver controller from Econic Cycles. This controller has the same line amps as the old one, but 40 more phase amps, which is going to be a lot of torque. It's also very customizable, which I like. Because even in mode 1 on the old controller, it'll loop out immediately from a stop if you aren't prepared for it. I also got a smaller version of the controller for another build. Once I mounted the controller, I soldered the positive and negative ends of the battery wires together so I could bolt them to the terminals. You're not really supposed to do this, but I thought I'd give it a try. I then did that with the phase wires and removed all of the extra wires I won't need on the wiring harness. After that, I tried to tune the motor, but no matter what I did, it wouldn't work properly. I even tried to use the other controller to see if that was the problem, but it did the same thing. After that, I realized the 5 volt wire was shorted to ground somewhere, and I assumed it was in the motor, so I cut the motor's 5 volt wire, and sure enough it went right back to 5 volts, so it looks like there's a short in the motor somewhere. I took the motor out, it connected the 5 volt wire directly, and sure enough, there was a short. So it looks like I'm going to have to go through all the Hall effect sensors and see where it is. First I checked my wiring, and it looked good. And then I went through all the wiring inside the motor, and it all looked good, so I was really confused on where it is. My next thought was that one of the Hall effect sensors was fried, so I supplied it with 5 volts and used a magnet held in my tweezers to check all the sensors. And they all turned out good, so I was really confused at this point. I even installed new sensors and tried everything again, but it still wouldn't work. So I just got a new motor from Econic Cycles. Here it is with the lower gearing than what I did earlier. That's right, it goes faster than the run I did earlier with the higher gearing. However, there was one problem. Luckily, I had the old motor that I could take the nut off of.
This scooter is an absolute beast now. At any speed under 30 miles an hour, you can hit the throttle and go right into a wheelie. It's also nearly impossible to launch it at full power without looping it. I also welded the freewheel and turned on the region and this made it super easy to wheelie. It's still pretty hard to wheelie at low speeds, and I think that's because of the extra weight. This scooter is 60 pounds, while the stock scooter is only 46 pounds. In my next video, I'm going to be building another one of these scooters that's a lot easier to build and a lot better, so stick around if you enjoyed this video. Anyways, that's about it. Thanks for watching.